Hello, it's Kirk Harnack for the Telos Alliance and specifically for the Voco 8 multi-mic audio processor. It's an amazing device and some people have a few questions on it from time to time. And here to help us with those uh, frequently asked questions is Shane Tovin. Hey, hey Shane, Kirk, welcome in. Kirk, good to see you. Uh, so, yeah, indeed, we're going to talk about the Voco 8. Um, here it is in the rack. Uh, not much you can do from the front panel, uh, per se. We can select some presets and do some setup, but what we're going to really talk about and focus on is the remote interface, um, our remote gateway software. All the real power lies in that software here. So one of the frequently asked questions that we get is just how do I assign inputs and outputs to this thing anyway? I mean, it's got eight analog, eight digital, uh, and of course, audio over IP. So that's a lot of I.O. on a single box, and it's all there no matter how many channels of processing you buy. So. Let's talk about how we get audio in and out of the box, okay? okay? So across the top here, we've got eight channels. So let's say we want to take a look at our first channel here. All right, we'll look at our input settings. All right, so what we can see here is how to actually select audio on the input side. We've got a drop down here for each channel uh, that says input. Right now it says liveware. So we're taking audio from our liveware network, but we can select the mic input, line input, uh, the AES digital input, uh, in addition to that liveware input. Now, next to that, we have a field here that says reference. And just think of that basically as your input level and how, you know, and how hard it's going to actually mm. drive the processor. All right. Now, down here at the bottom, we have the same thing, um, an output section. Okay. So we have three fields here, one for the line output, one for the AES digital output, and one for the uh, AOIP output. Right now, they're all three set to output that processed audio chain for that particular channel. But if we want to select something different, either on the line, the analog line, the AES, or the uh, AYP. Again, we just go to that field, drop it down, and we can select any number of things here for that output. The processed feed, uh, one of four microphone buses, which we'll talk about in a little bit, the input, uh, the microphone input, uh, AES input, uh, or uh, AYP. So now once again, they've got these uh, reference fields, which basically are the output level for each of those. So. That's the, uh, the one of the common questions that we typically get is how to uh, how to set those inputs and outputs. Shane, when you're assigning a given mic processor output to, let's say, a live wire or audio over IP output, how do you or where do you then uh, tell it which channel it's going to be coming out of uh, over the network? Ah, excellent question. Uh, those channel assignments can actually be found in the setup field. So if we go into setup, we'll see here we've got two fields. Uh, one says input. One says outputs. Now, if we go ahead and open up the inputs section, mm -hmm. uh, here we have live wire uh, settings for channels one through eight. Um, so now, if we draw, if we open that up, we can see there's a field for enable or disable. We we'll obviously want that enabled. Uh, you can set it for either live wire or AES67 mode. Uh, you can enter the channel number that you want off of the network. This is where you would enter that channel number that you want off of the network. Okay. So that's where those uh, those inputs and outputs are set up. We'll go over the outputs for you really quick as well, um, but very similar. So we go into outputs, outputs. Okay, LiveWare 1, open that up. Same thing, you would enable it, you give it a channel number, uh, tell it what mode you want, whether it's live, uh, live stream, which is probably what you want for a microphone channel. You could also do stereo or any number of AES67 modes as well, but LiveWare Live Audio is what we're using in this case. So. Give it a channel number, and uh, and away you go. I would assume for analog uh, inputs and outputs, you would simply choose uh, you know, analog one through eight input or and uh, analog one through eight output. Yeah, typically, but uh, in this case, uh, analog one is always going to go through my, channel one is always going to have output one. There's always a one to one correspondence sure. for those channels, so, and the same for the AES ones as as well. And the same for AES. The only real routing you can do is with those channel assignments, those liveware channel assignments. Gotcha, gotcha. And of course, you would use whatever scheme for channel assignments that you you had it in the rest of your plant. Set up in your plant, absolutely. Good deal. What about presets? There are a number of presets that come with the box. Let's say I want to, I I don't want to muss around a whole lot right away. I just want to get this thing going and then worry about uh, tweaking on those presets later. What are some good safe presets that I'm going to be happy with, probably? Absolutely, absolutely. So what we'll do is we'll go up here. We'll pick the channel we want to put a preset on. We'll click the preset field. When we do that, we've got a list here of all the presets that we can choose from. Now, um, there are a couple here that are specific uh, to microphones. They've been developed by uh, Corny Gould. So RE20 mic punchy and SM7 mic punchy. So if you use one of those two uh, fairly common microphones in your studios, that might be a good place to start, actually. But um, just go ahead and you know explore the list a little bit and, and see what you like. 
um, that's always a good uh, good technique with processing. Just go through them and see what sounds good in your facility, and uh, at least just as a starting point, and, and start from there. Now, what happens if I have an RE20 mic and I choose the SM58 uh, uh, mic <laughs> preset? Will if something you know, explode? You might, actually, you might actually like it. Uh, <laughs> okay. All right, good, good. It's, pre it's perfectly allowable, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, now, you mentioned uh, something earlier about, about you can assign to buses, and this is one of the cool features of the VOCO 8 is having a mic bus. How does that work? What's the idea, and then how do you make that work? Absolutely. The idea is, say you've got more microphones than console channels, okay? You've got, you know, four microphone channels for guests, and you want to consolidate it down to a single mic channel on your console, mm. okay? Well, what you do is in, uh, in VOCO, you could just assign all four of those guest microphones to uh, a single output bus and then assign that output bus uh, to a live wire channel, okay? So let's say we want our first four microphones here uh, on a bus, okay? So we'll go to mic one. It's already assigned to bus one. Let's go to our mic two. Right now it's set to independent, which means it's not on one of those four microphone buses. So we'll set that one to bus one as well. Same for mic three that on the bus and mic four get that one on the bus okay now um, to get that mic bus back out onto the live wire network you take one of the eight channels okay one of your eight channels uh, let's say eight in this case all right um, now IP application uh, and really you could do this with any of the channels okay um, but just for example let's go back to Channel one here. Okay, we'll say IP application bus one. All right. So right now, instead of putting channel one processed on the on the network, it's putting bus one on the network. We'll go back into our setup. We'll go to our outputs. And again, here in LiveWire one, um, we've given it a channel number already, so channel four hundred one. And we can see here source says bus one. Mm. And uh, so now on channel four hundred one, we've got mic bus one uh, instead of uh, the processed output of just channel one and again that uh, the setting there are two places where you can set that uh, either here in the, the setup screen or back here on the uh, the main page in the output section and they follow each other so you can see here so quick question um can i have uh bus one coming out on a live wire channel and mm -hmm. keeping uh, mics one two three and four coming out on their own live wire channels at the same time you can't, but what you could do is keep those coming out on, say, an analog or an AES channel. Ah, okay, okay, gotcha. So if you wanted to use uh, one, two, three, and four as the direct processed output for those channels, you just leave that uh, set to, uh, to process. Again, remember, it's always one to one for channels uh, for each of those channels. Yeah. All right. But you can have different things set on those. Uh, you know, either the processed output, one of the buses, or the uh, the input itself uh, on each of those outputs. Shane, you wrote the uh, VOCO8 manual, so it's full of good information on how to do all kinds of things, like setting all the individual processing controls and, and, and uh, uh, doing things like where uh, the, uh, a talkover, where the, the main host can, can, when he talks, it pushes everybody else down a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, so he has control. Uh, so if folks need more information about fine-tuning and setup, uh, the manual's a good place to go? Absolutely. Yep. Or you can always call our uh, our support line here at, uh, here at Telos. All right. Shane, thanks so much for sharing with us uh, input-output presets and bus channel assignments uh, on the Vocal 8. I appreciate your time. Thanks. Anytime, Kirk.